Hey guys, you're watching Boondocking with Dennis. This is Airport Road. The uh, Aransas County Airport is right to the right. We've done videos from in there before and read some of the historical markers and looked at the public housing that used to be on base housing. The uh, Aransas County Transfer Station is right up here on the left. <clears throat> Excuse me. This fog kind of has me all clogged up. This damp air that we've been having in the last three, four days. I wake up and cough up a golf ball. <laughs> and then I'm good to go. So I got about another half a golf ball in me. So I apologize. Yeah, the Aransas County Transfer Station. We don't have a dump here. But uh, you pull in here with what you got. And uh, I came here quite often when I was working for the construction company. Haul a trailer, they weigh you. You go unload and they weigh you again and you get a bill. There it is. Man, I had no idea they had that many trucks in here, vehicles. And maybe a local can tell me if this is true or, Lord forbid, I should use the internet. The uh, dog pound was right there. I'm sure it has an official name, like the SPCA or something like that. But right on the left in those gates was uh, some type of pound, Humane Society. Might be the Aransas County Humane Society. I'll have to look that up. What is this road? Dead End. Worship. So, Wishert. W-I-S-H-E-R-T Road. And I have never been down this road before, so I am intrigued. That's pretty neat. Okay, just regular houses. And I apologize, guys. Everything is foggy right now. I had to stop for a minute. I was felt like I was dragging something, but it was just some mud in my tires. It hasn't really rained much the last few days, but everything's wet just from the fog and the moisture in the air. No trespassing. That's a hell of a fence right there. And I do I do see a dirt road down at the end. So we will have to check that out. Yeah, I did my little rant the other day. Some people agree with me. Some people disagree with me. But I guess the point I'm trying to make is... It seems like everything I read, it says, This is racist. This is racist. I, I read an article that the Arkansas flag was racist. And... Um, I don't live in Arkansas. I've met some nice people in Arkansas. It's a beautiful state. It's none of my business what Arkansas puts on their flag. You know what I mean? I, I wouldn't want people from Arkansas to come to Pennsylvania or Maine or Texas and tell us what to do with our state flags. Now... I don't want to go into the whole Arkansas flag. It has stars on it that represents when it joined uh, the Union. And it's shaped in a diamond because it's the diamond state. And it's a good looking flag. And then it has four smaller stars on it. But the person that the, uh, designed it only had three smaller stars. But they're saying the Klan added the fourth star. Uh, which... That could very well be, but the reason, and I'm not defending the Klan in any way, uh, there's not a worse organization on the planet, to me anyway, but um, the four stars represent the four countries that were once there, including the United States and the Confederate States, and what would be the other ones, Mexico and, and Spain? Is that right? Or is it France and Spain? I'm sorry, Arkansas. I'm butchering your history from memory. 
But it happened. They were the Confederate States of America. So if they want to have four stars on their flag representing that history, that does not bother me. I don't find that racist. Now, the the fact anything involving the Klan, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's racist. So the reason for it being there might be racist, but that doesn't make them wrong. They were the Confederate States of America at some point, just like Texas and all the other states of the South were. So are we going to change history now? Are we going to go back and uh, erase that part where they were the Confederate States? You know, it's it happened. I've read books about it. It's true. I've seen movies. <laughs> So, I said I wasn't going to go on a rant, and there's my rant. But here's a dirt road. Okay, so, it says no dumping, but it doesn't say no trespassing. It doesn't say private property. This looks like a road to me, like a public road that just isn't paved. Because I see fences on both sides of it. So, if kind of the fence was coming across this. So, uh, we're going to go down and check it out. Because not only do I love a road that I haven't driven on before, I do love a dirt road. Even if it's a hazy, foggy dirt road. And you can tell people do come down here from time to time because the grass ain't growing up in the middle. There's my uh, detective skills right there. Did I ever tell you I, I taught a wolf how to meditate? Yeah. Now he's a werewolf. A were. He's a were because he meditates. No, not even a joke, huh? I can't quite call that one comedy gold, folks. Yeah, and... Okay, I'm thinking... Yeah, there's, wow, there's actually a little turnaround here. You can tell there's fencing, and man, I'd like to know how old that fence is. The gate's actually in good condition, but no one's been down there in a while. Let me do my little circle here, guys. Pay attention. Anyone spot Bigfoot yet? The nearest Bigfoot sighting in this area would be San Antonio, unfortunately. South of San Antonio as well. Did you guys know there's a Bigfoot, Texas? We've uh, I got a video from there if you ever want to check it out. Google Dennis and Bigfoot, Texas. Oh, that gate's open. Pretty sweet. Uh, no trespassing. They're no fun. Let's head back up the dirt road, guys. Yeah, the um, Bigfoot, Texas was named after a Texas Ranger. And I forget his name, but his nickname was Bigfoot. I'm thinking it was Jim, and I'm just drawing a blank on it. Is that the sunshine, guys? The sun struggling to come out? Someone took the time to open up a field over there. This is probably a farm country at some point. There was a fence, and I saw a few uh, beware of dog signs. I didn't notice any dogs coming in, but I was mostly focusing on the other side of the street that I was facing. So we'll have to keep an eye open. See if we see any friendly puppies we can go pet, despite the barbed wire and the beware of dog sign. <laughs> it took me a long while to appreciate this part of Texas with views like this. I mean, some things are easier. The mountains, the beach. I I kind of like this. The live oaks and the back on a paved road. Hear that sound? That's a sound of disappointment. <laughs> I want to say, uh, I'm looking for a word. So I might just make one up. Straggly. Straggly uh, shrubs. 
you know if you wanted to get anywhere and make a new path, you had some work to do. Because this stuff is thick. But that's why we get so many birds coming through here, because it offers such awesome protection for the smaller birds especially. And several times already up in the air, I've noticed two big hawks. And I can't tell if they're uh, Caracara or uh, Osprey. I don't uh, see well from distances. I don't pick up detail. And I'm colorblind. And I know the Caracara have the uh, orange right on the front. But it looks different to me. And from a distance, it, it's just hard to tell. I should have brought someone with eyes. There's some puppies right up here. Some nice friendly uh, Rottweilers, it looks like, right? All right, why don't you guys hop out and go pet them? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait here. <laughs> Guard dogs that don't bark scare me. <laughs> You're like, yeah, come over the fence, man. Come on, we want to show you something. <laughs> we we want to have some fun with you. Come on over. They went with the heavy-duty poles on that fence, huh? Where's my mirror? I just wanted to show you my mirror. What's this little dirt road? Oh, well. You know, there's some actually nice houses back off these roads. They got a Texas flag. They can't be all bad. The Lone Star State, Lone Star Flag. Guess that sunshine didn't last too long, huh? It's still trying to come out. It's kind of muted. I need some sunshine. I need to dry out the back of the truck. I've got clothes that I rinsed out three days ago that are still wet. And I don't want to have any mold issues. So, if someone could order up some sunshine with a good breeze, that would be awesome. I'd appreciate it. We'll head up to the main road. You know, I was trying to think if I ever went on drives with my family, and I remember one time in my brother's car, my mom, my sister, we drove from the Philadelphia area to Wildwood, New Jersey. My brother had some type of convertible. We rode up and back and, you know, walked the boardwalk down there and next day we all had sun poisoning. <laughs> Just great big bubble blisters on my shoulders and back of my neck. Not the smartest trip we ever took. I think that's the only time I've ever gotten sun poisoning. And then trips with my dad. I, I, I know, I mean, we. my dad drove us to Maine once the first time we ever went to Maine. Uh, I remember our dad drove us and, and that was neat. It is funny. Um, it was only 10 hours from Philadelphia to where my dad lived in Maine. And that just seems so long back then. But since moving to Texas, like 10 hours is like, you know, nothing. I mean, it takes seven to get to Dallas. So what's 10? I think when I go to visit uh, the Phillips in Arkansas, I think that's about 11 hours. So it, it, it's, it's not an impossible ride, and I wish I would have made it more to see my stepmom and my stepbrothers and sisters and meet my cousins when they were younger. Last time I saw my cousins... Uh, they were probably two and three years old, and I was in touch with them on Facebook, and uh, they both have blocked me now. <laughs> My one cousin is a good guy. He just has issues where he would block you and then be your best friend for six months and then block you again, and I don't remember any type of drama or conflict. And then um, my other cousin... I helped him out so many times with money, and I sent his family food when they didn't have food, and um, 
He cheated on his wife and then immediately blocked me. <laughs> like I had something to do with it, you know? And uh, then he sent me a friend request and I saw it about a day later. I mean, I don't get on Facebook that much. Uh, and I went to answer the friend request and he had blocked me again. <laughs> I'm like, uh, you know what? I'm just going to save some money here and do my own thing. By the way, if, if you're watching this, you can, you can pay me back that money you owe me at any time. That would be great. I guess once they figured I was done giving away money, the, they didn't need me anymore. Which is true with a lot of people. What the hell is that? It's like a, a round barn. Look at that. It's got an entrance. That's pretty neat. That's like one of those hurricane and tornado resistant buildings. That's really cool. I wonder what that's doing there. I, I, I guess after uh, Harvey, they said, <laughs> we need something different. This ain't, this ain't cutting it. That's really cool. I've never noticed that. I don't come up this airport road a whole lot, but... I've probably been up here, you know, 50 times over the years. Dirt roads. Yeah, um, I didn't really go on rides till I got my own car and friends and I would go to Virginia and we went to a lot of amusement parks through Pennsylvania and we went to... Niagara Falls and we went to Niagara Falls, the Canadian side several times and we'd go on all kinds of trips and it was usually at that age when I was like 22, 23, 24 to go to amusement parks or go to hockey tournaments and then see, you know, see, go sightseeing while we were there. But those were uh, the car rides I went to. I, I did drive to Florida twice and that's, um, that's too much when all you're doing is going to the destination. Now, if I could plan it to see stuff along the way, you know, it's a nice trip. And I, I really enjoyed Florida. All the times I've been to Florida, I've enjoyed the areas, the, the beaches and the, the Everglades and West Palm Beach and Fort Myers and Daytona and Clearwater Jacksonville. That's an entrance. That's a Texas size entrance right there. And right up here, guys, uh, Airport Road comes up to uh, 1781. And if we make a right, we would go down to that Murph Park where we uh, film sunsets every once in a while. Some alligators there. If we make a left, It'll uh, take us kind of by Hoots, where we got some brisket tacos before. Some nice little houses here. Little small practical homes. Very cool. Well, guys, that's our Sunday drive for today. Thanks for riding along. I hope I didn't bore you too much. Thanks for watching. This is Copano Bay. Sometimes we'll go film uh, sunsets from over there. About a mile down the coast there. And they will get the occasional alligator over here. So just keep your eyes open. The odds are slim, but it does happen. The deepest part of Copano Bay is 9.8 feet, and it does have legitimate pirate history.